From there, we continued our trek through the bushy forest where we mostly walked on flowing streams and pools filled with tadpoles. This stretch is a shorter leg as after about 20 minutes or so, we started to see the light as we neared the summit at its northern side. And there it was, we made it to the rim of the Pinatubo Caldera. Finally reached here the crater of Mount Pinatubo and the whole experience from, um, from San, Parangay Santa Uliana up until here in the crater. It's just an amazing scenery. Um, you're gonna see birds uh, along the way and what a lake. You're gonna see the lake here which is just, uh, you can enjoy some activities like kayaking and even swimming which you can do while you're here at the crater of Mount Pinatubo. From high above, we were met by the awesome beauty of the caldera, filled with rainwater. The greenish water and the sandy cliffs added to its beauty. After a few pictures starting our decline to the lake water, this hit bad on my ankles and knees as the steps are a bit high and it was a steep way down. This was the first time I felt tired in the whole trek. Getting down near the crater's lake shore, a number of tourists were already there. I took time to savor the beauty of the place. How the southern side of the caldera looked like a mountain ridge along a lake. It was simply beautifully crafted by God. Then my son, Ice, and cameraman Noel decided to take a short dip into the water. The water was cold, probably due to our altitude and the rainforest around the volcano. ROX Marquee is the third store of ROX in, well, in the Philippines. We are a recreational outdoor exchange. We cater to the, out, uh, to the outdoor enthusiasts, the people who wants to try outdoor, or just anybody who wants to experience, who wants to go outside and experience the outdoor. We, our objective is really to help the, uh, the non-pros to become pros and to cater to whatever needs they have. We are actually a hub for outdoor enthusiasts. For activities, we have on the extreme level the mountaineering, uh, the hiking. We, for family, we also, we also cater to the family-oriented activities like camping, uh, short trekking, uh, more active sport like uh, surfing, skates, and uh, well, the, what is growing right now, the more of healthness and fitness sports, which are biking and running. So. Um, we all of this, all, all of the products you need and the uh, special and the uh, knowledge. We have here uh, Mount Pinatubo Climb. It's a very, well for those who haven't tried climbing before, this is actually a good way to start because first you have 4x4 support. So you don't have to walk all the way. It's yeah, a right. quite easy trip. Uh, well, moderate trek. Uh, even kids can do it and first timers. So for all of you who are looking for an adventure, come visit us in ROX. We have branches in Cebu, Ayala Center, uh, one in Bonifacio High Street, and the latest is in Marquee Mall, Pampanga. I'm also inviting you to visit Luzon and its beautiful places. Pinatubo is a must-see for everybody. At around 4 p.m., we arrived back at a spot town to wait for a ride back to Clark Freeport. It was a long, tiring, but worthwhile day. It gives you time to appreciate how nature shapes the earth. After a volcano bursts towns and dislocates people with time, the place is starting to flourish again and new terrain is left.
presents a unique break to Olango Island that offers the best of both in an island, a passageway to several of the planet's exclusive migratory birds and an amazing feat of local livelihood and culture that you can volunteer to support. But the real beauty of Olango Island is that it's under 20 minutes away from Cebu in the Philippines. Sustainable livelihood and resource that is full. Olango Island has numerous fish marine sanctuaries, the site ideal for snorkeling and diving. With this and the island's interesting culture and one exciting destination, there is one more yet so close. Olango Island. Book your adventure now. Call 417-2247, mobile 0917-322-3859. We're finally here in the island of Alango. This is their main port area. We're in all the point of uh, all the visitors, all the local residents that come here. Um, it's practically here. This is the point of entry here in this uh, terminal of Alango. Alango Island is a diverse coastal ecosystem consisting of extensive coraline, sand flats, mangroves, seagrass beds, and offshore coral reefs. The island's mangroves are most extensive in the Cebu province and its offshore corals are home to scores of various marine species. The island is virtually flat and is surrounded by warm seas and partly sheltered from monsoons and strong trade winds. Olango Island, situated off Mactan Island in Cebu, is one of the seven best-known flyways in the world for migrating birds. Its main attraction is the 920 Hector Olango Island Wildlife Sanctuary, a haven for migratory birds from Siberia, northern China, and Japan. These birds flock to the island seeking refuge from the winter climate of other countries. The sanctuary supports the largest concentration of migratory birds found so far in the Philippines. There are 97 species of birds in Olango, 48 of which are migratory birds, but the rest are recent birds of the island. The birds use Olango as a major refueling station, as well as wintering ground. The birds stop by the island on their southward journey to Australia and New Zealand, and on their way journey back to their nesting grounds. Among the frequent guests are Chinese egrets, Asiatic dowsers, Eastern curlews, plovers, sandpipers, black-tailed goodwit, and red knot. It is best to visit Olango all year round. We arrived in Barangay of Santa Rosa with our guide, Matias, ready to show us around. Our first stop is the Orlando Island Fishing Center. So we are here at the, you know, at the fishing village of Suba. Lilian will, uh, will give you some information about that. My food tackle is on the ground. I'm the person who is in Suba. I'm the person who is in Suba. I'm the person who is in Suba. Pagnubuya, 
Ang panahon ng isda. Ang nanggit. Kumukay. Higit naman si Amos. Dahil yung pamagis sa upang panagat. Tawag din sa mong subit sa pagitan. Tawag rin ang pangkal. Pagkuhan niya siya mga bol-bol. Pagkuhan niya siya mga bol-bol. Ayun ka sir. Ayun mga agad niya sir. Amoy butal sa nagat. Tanga ng patong. Patong niya. Patong niya. Patong niya. Kaya ako kasok hangin. Hindi ako lagpot sa bandas. Bawal. Lain niya yung maagis. Ako pag inaboy niya. Tawag rin ang susun. Kuhat ni kawayan. Olango is best known as important habitat and pathway of migratory birds. Paints a typical picture of the Philippines. Numerous small island communities, low income, densely populated, and groaning under the strain of ever increasing pressure on its resources. The island has 20,000 human residents packed on 1,014 hectares of land. And despite its proximity to the highly urbanized Cebu City, the island lacks basic infrastructure such as water supply and waste disposal systems. Not surprisingly, Orango residents are heavily dependent on fisheries. Of the estimated 4,000 households, 75% are engaged on fishing or related livelihood activities based on the extraction of coastal resources. The fisheries around the island have long been depleted. According to the Olango fishers themselves, the average daily fish catch dropped from about 20 kilograms per fisher in 1960 to less than 2 kilograms today. Two reasons are often cited, increased population pressure and the use of destructive fishing practices. So we are here, you know, as you know, in Olango Island and uh, in spe more specifically in the village of Suba. So the Suba village is located at the back door of the Olango Island Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, which is the main, you know, uh, protected area in Olango. And that sitio, that village, belongs to the Barangay Sabang, the largest area in Olango. We propose like a uh, fishing demonstration and shell crop demonstration because that's the main activity. We really want the people can, can feel, and can appreciate the, the, the local way of life here of the, of the people. And it's really a share about a sharing experience, you know. So. Wildlife Sanctuary and we're just here in the, the heat of the sun at around we're in the 11 just an hour before lunch and this is the most ideal time to come in here in the Lango Sanctuary we're in you're seeing migratory birds of all we have 62 to 63 species that we can see here in the island of Lango and it's just 15 20 minutes away from Mactan so what you're going to see it's just a variety of species. And when, one of the things that we need to do here is to we need to lessen our movements and we need to minimize our sound so not to disrupt the birds that are feeding in this particular area. So we watch this one. Olango Island is also one of the most important bird areas in the Philippines. There are 77 species of migratory birds that use the East Asian, Austrian, Asian flyways and Olango hosted more than half of these numbers. Olango Island is located approximately 4 kilometers east of Mactan Island and 15 kilometers east of Cebu City. It is composed of 11 barangays with a total population of 32,527. Olango is the Philippines' first wetland of international importance for waterfowl. Wetlands provide vital habitat for water birds, fish, frogs, invertebrates, as well as mangrove forests and seagrass beds. Wetlands prevent flooding by holding water much like a sponge. It helps keep river levels normal and filter the water that passes through them. Hence, wetlands are vital to humans, plants, animals, and to the environment. The significance of this sanctuary becomes more apparent with the presence of vulnerable and near-threatened species such as the Chinese egret and Asian dowager. It's 
September to May is the best time to visit at least two hours before peak high tide in order to see the largest concentration of birds in small areas. Trapsing through endless coconut groves outside the wetland sanctuary, our friend Matias said our next stop is the freshly made native coconut vinegar for sale in the area. When we got to the address, we parked by a roadside stall that only had a few bottles of opaque coconut vinegar for sale. I asked the vendor a few questions about how the vinegar was made, whether it was a type of vinegar that contained live vinegar eels. While I was thrilled to have found a few bottles of native vinegar, I wasn't ecstatic yet. A few minutes into the impromptu interview, the vendor asked if I would like to see how the vinegar was made from tree to bottle. Finally, my chance to learn a lot more about native coconut vinegar, which I will break into two posts. The first on tuba, the raw material, and a second post on the coconut vinegar. If I had more time, I could have gone one step further to Lambanog, the steel product from tuba, but they weren't making any that day. I have enjoyed coconut vinegar for the past years and frankly until now never really knew how it is made. We then walked by foot several hundred meters into the coconut grove behind Mang Efren, who was the resident tuba gatherer in that area. Deeper and deeper into the woods, we went and along the way. Mang Efren pointed out certain trees without coconuts on them but instead hanging tubes called garong that were collecting the dripping sap. It was explained to me that the tuba or sap of the coconut was collected only from the particular trees, those that were heavy tuba producers relative to their neighbors. As I understand the process, the coconut tree sends out flowering stem which is severed with a scythe and the sap or tuba flows from this cut into the hanging cylinders called garong. The sap is gathered from these cylinders every morning. To get the tuba, Mang Efren must climb each and every tree balance precariously 50 to 80 feet above ground gathered to the back from the garong by transferring it to the container latch onto his shoulder. Make a new slice or cut to the flowering branch with a seed and hammer back down the tree. Notice how he clings barefoot with just two or three toes to the notch in the tree. He clambers up dozens of trees every morning. The freshly gathered tuba can be enjoyed immediately. I was handed a glass of fresh tuba collected that morning and I drank about a third of the glass. It is a bit sour but utterly delicious. Unlike any tuba I have had before precisely because it was so fresh. But I thought it was still a bit more sour than it should be. After discussing this with Efren, he clearly got my drift. He walked off and got another glass from another container and had me try this second glass which was absolutely brilliant. Clean, vaguely sweet, vaguely reminiscent of coconut juice with just a hint of alcohol. Now, this was the finest tuba I will probably ever have, just hours old. It's good. The difference? Well, it could gross you out a while, as it did me. Apparently, the garong or tube that collects the sap used to be made out of a bamboo cylinder. As we headed back to our boat at day's end, it was indeed a learning adventure for me on the potentials of a lango when responsibly taken care of. We owe to the one that created the island to be good stewards to what has been temporarily handed to us. For exclusive tour packages to Olango Island, call 412-6837 or 0917-322-3855. Okay, I would like to invite uh, everybody uh, to come to visit uh, our tour here in Olango. You will be impressed by all our local activities and in the same time you will be contributing to the development uh, of the island as well as supporting the livelihood of the local communities. So we expect to see you very soon. Let your first outdoor adventure begin with ROX. As a leading provider of outdoor experience, ROX can definitely help you make the most of your adventure. Check out our wide array of store displays and feel free to talk to our experts for assistance in designing your outdoor experience and in choosing the proper gear to go with it. Through to its vision of providing clients with excellent outdoor experience, ROX carries top-of-the-line outdoor sporting brands across all categories. From Romy Gardusa's Everest Expedition, to North Face Outwear and Equipment, to Lance Armstrong's Trek Bikes. We have them all under one roof. 